the religious people got up and walked out, mocking them. How could you let them come in and disgrace our church? Well, the pastor was looking at the heart and souls of the people. But religion, this is our church. And we few and no more. And that's a lot of churches that are bound in religion and not relationship with who he is. We are called to love people into the kingdom. No matter what their sins are. Would I, would I talk to someone who is uh, in homosexuality? Yes, I would talk to them. I would love them. I would never mock them. But I would share the truth with them. And then it's up to them to reject it or not. But it wouldn't because I can't be around you. No, we're here to change the world and as Jesus did, here, he could have, he could have, yeah, stone her. Yeah, she committed this sin, but no, Jesus was looking at her heart. We don't know what's going on in a person's life and what, is a, what has caused them to get to the point in their life where they are today. How many women out there are in prostitution and you find out their history as children, they were raped and raped and raped maybe by a family member or a neighbor or something. And so whenever, whenever a person has sexual relationships with them, your souls are tied. And whoever you have had sexual relations with, you are tied, your soul is tied to that person. And whatever they have in their life comes upon you. We learned this years ago in a ministry called Cleansing Strength. How many people in the church are packing things and they can't get right with God and they're struggling in their faith because of things that have happened in the past. And so, you can do it easily by yourself. Just get on your knees and say, God, forgive me. And all these things that have been in my past, I give them to you. Set me free. Take them from me. My past, I give to you. I don't want to carry it anymore. And your past, if you don't get rid of it, will keep popping up in your life. Whether it's alcoholism, whether it's sexual addictions, whether it's drugs, or whatever it is, you have to turn it over to the Lord and put it under the blood of Jesus. Otherwise, the, the devil will keep bringing that back up in your life. This is, this is a part of the body of Christ is the recognizing that we can be totally set free. And I know there's people in churches that are not set free. The pharisaical spirit wants to rise up and wants to condemn people because you're not perfect. Somewhere, and we're seeing this in the political system right now, somewhere back in somebody's life, they did something that they may have put it under the blood of the Christ, but the enemy is the accuser of the brethren. And he will throw that back at you. He will keep throwing it back at you. And I'm seeing stuff that's going on in the churches that things were happened years ago and were put under the blood of Christ, but it's coming out and it's this religious system is coming back and bringing it back and destroying people's lives. We have to recognize the pharisaical spirit wants to destroy the church and the influence of the church. Not for the, the true Pharisee spirit seldom misses a service that an opportunity to challenge God's messenger. The Pharisaeical spirit will want to challenge you. The Pharisees 
next challenge Jesus concerning his father and proudly boasted of being the children of Abraham. And Jesus quickly reminded them that they would do the works of Abraham if indeed they were the seeds of Abraham. They weren't doing the seeds of Abraham. On the contrary, Jesus said, you of your father, the devil, and you carry out his desires. So here's the religious organization of the day carrying out the, the wills of the adversary, the devil. Destroying people's lives rather than being in people to Christ. Characteristic of a pharisaical spirit. It is immoral, present at any age. It loves religious ritual. It loves to dictate rules to others, but doesn't live, the, live by them. It's always, it always challenges the true word. This is the pharisaical spirit that infiltrates the church. See, Jesus wasted no time on Pharisees. Matthew reported in the 23rd chapter, this is from the Message Bible. You're hopeless, you religious scholars and Pharisees, frauds. You go halfway around the world to make a convert, but once you get him, you make him into a, a replica of yourself, double damned. You're hopeless. You burnish the surface of your cup and bowls so that, so that they sparkle in the sun, while the insides are maggoty with your greed and gluttony. Stupid Pharisees, scour the inside and then the gleam, gleaming surface will mean everything. Matthew 23. You can read it in your, but that was from the message and I thought that was really hitting it where it's at. D, the highest, <clears throat> the highest hindrance of the kingdom of God on the earth is not adultery, not pornography, not communists, not the militant homosexuals, and not abortionists. It's the church. The church organization. How does the world view the church? Not the body of Christ. We're talking about the church organization. The body of Christ is different. This building does not identify us. The Holy Spirit identifies us. So, how does the world view the church? Religion on Sunday, secular during the week. A form of godliness without no power. Seeking the hand of God but not its face. Establishing their own kingdom and not the kingdom of God. Charles Finney made a comment. How awfully profane is the use very frequently made of the Lord's Prayer, both in public and in private. To hear men and women chant over the Lord's Prayer, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth while their lives are anything but conformed to the known will of God is shocking. To hear men say, thy kingdom come, while it is most evident they are making little or no sacrifice or effort to promote the kingdom, forces the conviction of barefaced hypocrisy. Charles Finney, great revivalist of years gone by. But the church, this is not the church. You might have a name out there that says you're the church. 
But we want to be the church, the body of Christ. The church has the powers over demons. We have the power over religion. We have the power of the, the Spirit of God flowing through the church. Demons recognize the power of Jesus in the church. I've said this before, and it's, it's, I know others have re- experienced this. When Shirley walked by a lady in the store one day, and she was, eh! Why? Because I'm pretty sure that woman had a demon, and it recognized Shirley as having the power of God. People that have demons don't want to be around you. See, that's the problem we're dealing with in our culture today. It's not political. It's a spiritual war right now for the heart of our nation. And I'm seeing so much of the news media that are mouth and demonic. I sense it in my spirit that they're, they're wanting to humiliate, they lie, they have no conscience about lying. Who's the father of lies? And they fabricate lies. They're bringing forth lies more and more and more, trying to destroy whoever rises up. Are, they, are people who are running for office perfect? No, none of us are. None of us are, uh, are walking perfectly. But we have the blood of Christ on us. Where were more? Matthew eight sixteen. When the eve had come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. Matthew eight twenty eight. And when he he was come to the other side into the country of the Gadarenes, there met him two possessed with devils. Come out of, coming out of the tomb, exceedingly fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What shall we to do with thee, Jesus? Those demons recognized who Jesus was. Thou Son of God, Art thou come hither to torture us before our time? So as as Shirley experienced, there could be someone to walk by you and have a response because of the Spirit of God that's in you. The devil knows who we are. And the devil loves to go to church where he's invited. But he will not come into this place. Because he will run from this place. Because we will not let him. Because only the Spirit of God dwells in this place. And I pray only the Spirit of God dwells in our homes. So how did the Jesus, how did the demons recognize Jesus? They had not met him before. But Jesus declared that he was there when Satan was kicked out of heaven in Luke 10, 18. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. They were there when Satan was kicked out and they saw Jesus. So they saw him coming. They knew exactly who he was. See, this goes way back. Demons know. The demons recognize all true representatives of Christ. Acts 19, and I'm I'm just going to share this first part here. Then some of the itinerant Jews, exorcists, took it upon themselves to call on the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exercise you by the the Jesus whom Paul preached. 
Sounds like they didn't know him. They saw someone else doing it, Paul. Well, we can do that. So we cast him out in the name of, uh, in the name of Paul, who Paul preached. Also, there were seven sons of Stephen, a Jewish, high, <coughs> a Jewish chief priest who did so. Verse 15, it's up here. The evil spirits answered and says, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? How would you like the demons to respond to you? I know you, Mike. The demon would say. I know you, Jerry. The demon would say. The demons know who we are because the glory of God's on us and they recognize us because of Christ in us. See, Jesus, like I said back again, Jesus would not put us in a position that he didn't give us full power over the powers of darkness. It would be foolish to turn the church over to the body religious system of the world that the devil, devil can run rampant in it but Jesus, no, commissioned us, the body of Christ. And the evil spirits answered and says, it's Jesus I know, Paul I know. Why did they know Paul? Because Jesus was here. But who are you? Then the man in whom the evil spirits leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them so that they, uh, they fled out <coughs> of that house naked and wounded. You better not try to cast out a spirit unless the power of God lives inside of you and you've been born again and set free. If you're playing religious games, you better not doing it. You need to know him and he lives inside of you. So do demons recognize you or me? If you have Christ in you, they recognize you. And they will test you. The church is the body of Christ. So why is the church the body of Christ and not the body of Jesus? Question. One, Jesus is a name of Hebrew origin that first one I don't know, but it, or Yeshua, Joshua, which means salvation. So Jesus means salvation. Christ is a title meaning the anointed one. Jesus took his body, scarred and all, to heaven. So his body is in heaven. Jesus is in heaven. The body of, of Christ was left on the earth in the church. Spiritual proof that the church is the body of Christ is in Romans 8, verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. That's it right there. It's not this body but it's the Spirit of God that dwells in us. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of Him who raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body through His Spirit who dwells in you. We do not cast out spirits in the name of Jesus. We cast out spirits in the name of Christ. It's okay to say the Lord Jesus Christ. I exercise you. 
We are Christ. We are the body of Christ. The anointed. The anointed to carry the message of the gospel to the world. To transform the world. But I am fearful that much of the church today doesn't realize this. And that's why much of the church is attenders. The same spirit that empowered Jesus to turn water into wine, open blind eyes, walk on water, cleanse lepers, raise the dead, is now in us to empower us. We have become the body of Christ. The spirit of the anointed one. The Messiah's spirit is now in us. His body on earth. We are His body on earth. He left His body here and He's there. And we now have an awesome privilege of representing Him to the people of the earth. That's why we can be partners. That we are partnering with God because everything that Jesus